إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful speech The best of words are the words and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance that we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kulla bid'atin dhalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kulla dhalalatin fil nar Every going astray, every misguidance, it is in the hellfire. ثم أما بعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa taala He says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ. Allah says what means and paradise will be brought near to the muttaqun, not very far off. The muttaqun, those who have taqwa, those who live a life in obedience to Allah. Such as they put a barrier between themselves and Allah's punishment by keeping their duty to Allah, by fearing Allah, by being conscious of Allah. هَذَا مَا تُوَعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيدٍ It will be said, this is what you were promised. This Jannah that you're about to enter is what Allah promised you. It is for those after returning to Allah in sincere repentance and those, and those who preserve their covenant with Allah. By obeying Him and what He ordered from first and foremost Tawheed to worship Him alone without partners and all the way through the other things that He commanded us in this deen. Here we see that Allah, He affirmed that Jannah will be for sinners. It will be for sinners. And the best of those sinners, وَخَيْرَ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّبُونَ As our Prophet ﷺ said, the best of those who sin are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because their heart always turns back to Allah. Even when they sin, their heart is always yearning for Allah to forgive them and have mercy on them and be pleased with them. مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانِ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبِ مُنِيبِ Who feared the most beneficent, who feared Allah بالغيب in the unseen, worshipping Him in this dunya, even though they could not see Him or meet Him. And they brought a heart turned in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Him absolutely free from each and every type of shirk, only knowing that your success is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُدْخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ Enter into this Jannah in peace and security. ذَلِكَ, ذلك يَوْمَ الْخُلُودِ This is the day your eternal life begins. The day with no sadness, no depression, no anxiety, no illness, no old age. This is when eternal life begins for you. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ there they will have all that they desire. And yet, once they think they have everything they have, we will give them more. The look, the sight, being able to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reveals these ayat in Surah Qaf. And He also reveals, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Allah says what means no calamity befalls but with the leave of Allah. Everything that happens in this life, Allah ordained or allowed to happen or decreed that it was allowed to happen. 
And whosoever believes in Allah, whoever accepts the qadr of Allah, and they believe in Allah, Allah yahdi qalbah, Allah will guide his or her heart. He will guide them to true faith, to that tawheed bil yaqeen, to that they have faith with certainty. Iman bil yaqeen, they are certain with full belief that what has befallen them was already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him. And Allah is all knower of everything. ثم قال الله إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون. Allah says what means the believers. They are those, and this is where we should listen especially because we want to be from the mu'mineen. The believers are only those who when Allah is mentioned, they feel a fear in their hearts. And when his verses, the Qur'an, are recited unto them, they increase in their faith. The hearts shake, they tremble, they increase in faith, looking to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get closer to his pleasure. And they put their trust in their Lord alone without anybody else to put their trust in. ثم قال الله لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يؤاخذكم بما كسبت قلوبكم والله غفور حليم. Allah says what means Allah will not call you to account for that which you did unintentionally in your oaths, but He will call you to account for that which your hearts have earned. This heart, as we're going to see, because this is the topic of today and maybe the next couple of weeks, this piece of flesh that we feel from, and, and we'll describe it a little bit more soon, this is what we will be judged by. This is what we will see, what this piece of flesh earned in this life, of good and of bad, and then those deeds will be weighed. You will be called to account for what your arts, hearts have earned, for Allah is off forgiving, most forbearing. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made the dua to Allah, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ O oh Allah, do not disgrace me, do not humiliate me on the day when all the creatures will be resurrected. That day, that day, even with the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah, we beg Allah to not disgrace us, to not humiliate us, the day that we're all resurrected and questioned for how we chose to live this life, what we chose to say, what we chose to do, what we chose in terms of the paths our lives went down, our lives went down. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَانٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam saying in the Qur'an, saying the day where neither sons, your wealth or your children, they won't avail you. They won't come to your aid. What you did with them in this life is what will matter. At that point, nothing can aid you. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the one who comes to Allah with a good, pure, clean heart. Free of shirk, pure from shirk, pure from associating anything in worship with Allah, strictly, no play involved, and pure from nifaq, from hypocrisy, to say and not to do and many other aspects of nifaq. And this is a series of khutab to come, inshaAllah. So this heart, the qalb, as we see in these ayat, and there are more ayat that we didn't mention, is one of the most important pieces of flesh in the body. So it must be focused on the heart must be corrected. The heart must be rectified. The heart must be warned in order for us to be successful on that day of resurrection. It is the piece of flesh that houses our fear. The piece of flesh that houses our hope. The piece of flesh that houses our love. The piece of flesh that houses our ikhlas, our sincerity. The piece of flesh that houses our emotions. The piece of flesh that houses our true belief our sincere belief in Allah alone with our partners <clears throat> and in His Messenger wasallam. So we must remind one another, always like we do regarding the tongue and being warned about the tongue, we must remind one another always about rectifying this piece of flesh, rectifying the heart and setting it aright. So on the Day of Judgment, you're on the right side, the good side, the side of those who will be said, this up there, your Jannah, this is your eternal life. So let us look what is mentioned in the hadith regarding the heart. And Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu he said, "Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudga idha salahat salahat jasadu kulluh wa idha fasadat fasad al jasadu kulluh ala wa hiya al qalb." Rawah al Bukhari. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Verily, in the body is a piece of flesh. They say it's the size of your fist." 
So this in proportion to the rest of your body is what? Two or three percent of it? Yet this piece of flesh, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed in the body is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, if it is good, if it is solid, then the entire body is sound. But if it is corrupt, then the entire body is corrupt. And truly that piece of flesh is the heart. It is your qalb. So that one small piece of flesh compared to the rest of your body, you can be big, you can have muscles, you can have everything going for you, everything else in the body is functioning. But just like with health, if there's a problem in the heart, it'll shut you down. If there's a problem in your heart with respect to this deen, with respect to how you live your life, it will shut you down. And Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, he said, O Messenger, he said, we said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, who are the best people? فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم تُو الْقَلْبِ الْمَخْمُونَ وَالْلِسَانَ السُّدُوقِ He said, one, the one who is of the best of people is the one who has a heart which is swept clean and is truthful in speech. We said, O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, we understand and we know truthful in speech. But what is the heart that is swept clean? فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هُوَ التَّقِيُّ النَّقِيُّ لَا إِثْمَ فِيهِ وَلَا بَغْيَ وَلَا حَسَدْ He said, the one who has that heart which is swept clean is the one that is God-fearing, the one that is pure, the one that does not have sin, nor transgression, nor envy. These are all things which spoil the good heart. Envy, to wish that somebody doesn't have what you have. Envy, to want what other people have even though Allah did not choose it for you. This hasad, it can ruin the heart and ruin the whole body. <clears throat> the sin which can cause staining on the heart, the transgression of Allah's limits which can cause staining in the heart. This is why the Prophet ﷺ, he said that heart which is swept clean does not have these things in it. Again, we mentioned, as Allah said, the one who turns with their heart to Allah in tawbah, it verifies that Allah knows that we're going to sin, that we're going to make errors, that we're going to make mistakes. But you could still be raised to that level of the muttaqun because you make that tawbah. And you turn your heart in repentance to Allah. So he's, we said, what are the signs of the good, clean, pure heart? He said, الَّذِي يَشْنَعْ الدُّنْيَا وَيُحِبُّ الْآخِرَةِ He said, it's the one who despises this life. And he loves and he yearns for the akhirah, for the hereafter. This does not mean become a slum bum. This does not mean that you cannot enjoy this life. Because Allah, He commanded, He even asked of us, the Prophet ﷺ, the most, one of the most frequent dua He would make, is, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا O Allah, give us good in this life. وَفِي الْآخَرَةِ بِحَسَنًا And good in the next life. وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ And save us from the torment and the punishment of the hellfire. So you can ask for that. But here, that zuhud, Renouncing this dunya, knowing that it has no value. It has the value of the wing of a mosquito, a drop of water compared to the rest of the ocean. The one who despises worldliness, despises just living this life as if it is their last, but loves the akhirah. And we said, and who shows a sign of it? He said, Mu'minun fi khulqin hasan. He said, what are the signs of this person who despises this worldly life, but loves the hereafter? He said, it is the believer that has good character. The believer with good character. Because the believer that has good character, he knows that on Yom Al-Qiyamah, أَثْخَلُ شَيْءٍ فِي الْمِيزَانِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حُسْنُ الْخُلَقِ That the heaviest thing on your scales, on the Day of Judgment, is your good character. عن أبي غار رضي الله عنه قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, الغنى في القلب والفقر في القلب. مَنْ كَانَ الْغِنَى فِي قَلْبِهِ لَا يَضُرُّهُ مَا لَقِيَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَنْ كَانَ الْفَقْرُ, الفقر فِي قَلْبِهِ فَلَا يُغْنِيهِ مَا أَكْثَرَ لَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّمَا يَضُرُّ نَفْسَهُ شُحَّهَا This hadith which is sahih, the Prophet ﷺ said, Wealth is in your heart and poverty is in your heart. Whoever is wealthy in his heart, he will not be harmed no matter what happens to him in this world. The one who's wealthy in his heart, who fears Allah, who trusts in Allah's promise, who trusts in Allah's qadr and decree, this person is the wealthy one. This person in his heart, nothing harms him in this world. But whoever's impoverished, impoverished in their heart, who has poverty in their heart, 
They will not be satisfied no matter how much he has in the world. Give him everything he can own. Give him everything he can have from food to clothing to land to pro- no matter what it would be to money. He's never satisfied with it. Verily, he will only be harmed by the greed of his own soul. The heart. This is that piece of flesh that matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So work on it and rectify it. And Anas ibn Malik, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يبلغ عبد حقيقة الإيمان حتى يحب للناس ما يحب لنفسه من الخير. This hadith which is sahih in the collection of Ibn Habban, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the servant does not attain the reality of faith. You will not complete your faith, you will not have well-rounded faith until you love for the people what you love for yourself. We always mention, لا يحب, ما يحب لأخيه, ما يحب that he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. That he loves for his neighbor what he loves for himself. This one mentions للناس. You will not have complete faith till you love for the people what you love for yourself. You should love that the people have tawheed. You should love that they worship Allah alone without partners and not a statue or a son or a daughter or, or, or whatever it may be. You should love that the people do good. You should love that the people that even are not Muslim, that they dress modestly and they carry themselves well and they're kind and they're gentle and the likes of these matters. The Muslims should love for the people what they love for themselves. And likewise, you should hate for the people what you hate for yourself. This is how the heart can attain the reality of faith. Because the source of the heart, the source or the home of the heart and faith of love, عفواً, the source of love for others and hating of others, the source of faith of iman, the source of it is in that heart. And Anas ibn Malik, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said to me, Ya Bunayya, إِنْ قَدَرْتَ أَنْ تُصْبِحَ وَتُمْسِي لَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِكَ غِشٌ لِأَحَدٍ فَافْعَلْ So, Anas ibn Malik, he said, the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said to him, O young man, if you're able every morning and evening to remove rancor from your heart, to remove bitterness towards others from your heart, to remove resentfulness towards others from your heart, to remove hate from your heart, to remove continuing anger from your heart, if you can do so, do so. Do so. Remove this from your heart because it will destroy you. Then the, the, the destroy you part is my words, not from the hadith. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he said to me, Ya Bunayya, wa dhalika min, min sunnati, wa man ahya sunnati, faqad ahabbani, wa man ahabbani kana ma'i fil jannah. He said, young man, that is my sunnah. That you would have all the hours of your days, morning and night, that you would live your days and your nights removing anchor, rancor, Bitterness, resentfulness, hate, continuing anger, that you will remove these things from your heart. This is my sunnah, and whoever revives my sunnah has loved me, and whoever loves me will be with me in paradise. Yet what overtakes our heart? Anger, hate, resentment, fuel to revenge, to show rage, to get back, holding grudges. This ain't the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The heart needs to be worked on. And when I mention just a few minutes ago, that the source of love and iman is the heart. Iman is not complete. Iman is not complete. Illa bitasliq al-qalb with the belief in the heart, except with the belief in the heart. Wal-qawl bin lisan and the statements of the tongue, wal-amal bin jawarih and the actions of the limbs. Iman is not just saying, you have that belief in your heart. It's not just saying it with your tongue. It must include the actions of the limbs. أقول قالي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إذا الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many of us when we think of the heart. You just think of it when it beats. Or you might think of it when you're sad because it hurts. Or you might think of it if you have some type of medical condition which causes you to pay attention to it. But as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ 
in your body is a piece of flesh. If it's sound, the rest of you is going to be sound. But if it's corrupt, the rest of you is going to be corrupt. Indeed, that piece of flesh is the heart. It must be worked on. It must be rectified. Every day, every waking second of your day, it should be focused on. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qali, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يدخل الجنة أقوام أفئدتهم مثل أفئدة الطير. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in Sahih Muslim this hadith narrated people whose hearts are like the hearts of birds will enter paradise. And now we responding to this or uh, commenting on this he said قيل معناه متوكلون وقيل قلوبهم رقيقة. And now we Rahimahullah, on commenting on this hadith and explaining, he said, it's interpreted to mean that they are those who rely upon Allah. Just like the birds. They get up in the day or they start flying. What's holding them up? But the air that Allah causes to be under their wings to hold them up. And those birds fly around looking for root food, relying on who? Not themselves. Relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for them. So this is what is meant, the peoples whose hearts are like the hearts of birds will enter paradise. They rely upon Allah, or it means those who have soft hearts. They're gentle, they're kind, they're forgiving, they don't hold grudges, they're humble, they have humility. These are the people who have those soft hearts. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he said, a man came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he complained to him about the hardness of his heart. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنْ أَرَدْتَ تَلْيِينَ قَلْبِكَ فَأَطْعِمَ الْمَسْكِينَ وَأَمْسَحْ رَأْسَ الْيَتِينَ In this hadith from Musnad Imam Ahmad, and it is Hassan, he advised the man, if you want to soften your heart, then feed the poor and pat the orphans on their heads, meaning يعني, be good to them and kind to them. Be gentle with them. Let them know you care for them. Feeding the poor, this softens the heart. Being good to the orphan, this softens the heart. It all involves looking after, taking care of others. This is what will soften your heart from hardness. Fadl ibn Ubaid, he reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Al-Mujahid man jahada nafsah. He said, the mujahid, the one who's in a state of jihad, who's constantly struggling and persevering, is the one who wages that jihad against his own self, his own soul, against his desires, against his whims, against his, his lusts, against his, the calls that may come to you, the whispers to disbelieve or to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the whispers of the shaitan, the one who struggles against this, this is the one who wages his jihad against his soul. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alayka wa tulis samti, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in this hadith, which is in Shu'b al-Iman and is graded as Hassan, he said, you must have good character and observe long periods of silence. Because many times, Many times when you're not silent, your tongue is moving. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ, he grabbed at one point, and he said, this is what I fear for you. You must have good character and observe the long periods of silence by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad ﷺ. No one can behave with deeds more beloved to Allah than these two. These are good deeds that show that your heart is under control, that your heart is focused on pleasing Allah. Good character. Having good character, good manners with the people from the smile on the face, to being kind in how you ask and how you represent. Everything which shows good character, gentleness and kindness and the likes of those, and being silent. Holding on to that silence so your tongue doesn't say something it regrets. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi he would say, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub thabit qalbi ala deenik. He would constantly make the dua, O turner or changer of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion, upon this deen. And this is a dua we should always say. Because living and dying Muslim is not a guarantee. It is a gift, a blessing, a favor from Allah to you. And it can be snatched if you, dis, if you don't pay attention to it. 
Anas, he said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi we believe in you and that which you were sent, do you fear for us? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَعَمْ إِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ بَيْنَ أَصْبَعِينَ مِنْ أَصَابِعِ مِنْ أَصَابِعِ اللَّهِ يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ The rest of this hadith, and it's in Sunan Al-Tirmidhi, and it's Sahih. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Yes, Anas, I do fear for you. For the hearts are between the fingers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, from the fingers of His. He turns them whichever way He wills. In this hadith, we must always mention because our good deeds, our prayers, our zakah, our fasting, our hajj, our good deeds, our charity, none of it means jack if you are not upon the correct tawheed and the correct aqidah. It means nothing. So we must affirm here as always, reminding ourselves so we don't fall into the traps of the foolish who say Allah doesn't have fingers. Allah has fingers. It was affirmed in the book, the Qur'an. It was affirmed on the tongue of His Messenger Wasallam. But those fingers are not like our fingers. Those fingers are not like a finger that you've seen or that you will ever see. Those fingers are not like something that you could conjure up or draw or imitate or design. Allah said, There is nothing comparable or like Allah and He is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. But we cannot say that these fingers don't exist or they mean something else. This is not likening Allah to His creation. Allah mentioned some of those sifat those uh, characteristics. And so did his messenger وسلم, by Allah's guidance. So we can't say other than that. And we always have to remind ourselves with these aspects of aqidah, of our creed, because this is what will earn us the mercy ta'ala, that we all need to enter Jannah. So the hearts are between the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He flips them how he, will, he wills, so we should, how he wishes. So we should always make that dua. Ya muqallab al qulub, O changers of the, O changer of the hearts, thabit qalbi ala dinik, make my heart firm upon your deen. And lastly, we'll mention a hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Waladi nafsi bi yadih la yadhul al jannah hatta hatta tuslimu, wala tuslimu hatta tahabu wa afshus wa afshus salam tahabu wa iyaqum wa al bughdata." فَإِنَّهَا هِيَ الْحَالَقَ الْحَالِقَ لَا أَقُولْ لَكُمْ تَحْلَقُ الشَّعْرِ وَلَكِمْ تَحْلَقُ الدِّينِ This hadith in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad from Imam Al-Bukhari, it is a hadith which is greater as Hassan. The Prophet ﷺ said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, you will not enter Jannah until you submit to Allah. And you will not submit to Allah until you love one another. This is part of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we love one another in, in Islam, our brothers and sisters in faith, that when they're good, we're good, we're happy. When there is sadness or grief or suffering, that we suffer and are sad and grieved. He said, spread the peace and you will love one another. And beware of hatred. Beware of hatred. Again, that love, that hatred it emanates from the heart. He said, beware of hatred because it's a razor. It's like a razor. And I'm not saying a razor which shaves off hair. He said, it is a razor that shaves away your deen. It's a razor that shaves away your deen. All of that emanates from that piece of flesh. The love for one another, the care for one another, the concern for one another. And it's opposite, the hatred for one another, the envy for one another, the dislike for one another. It all comes back to that piece of flesh. If it's sound, you're going to be good and successful. But if it's not, if it's corrupt, be prepared to meet Allah as a corrupt person. May Allah rectify our hearts and make us of those whom He is pleased with. And may Allah guide our hearts. Allah makhfil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. Al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat. Ahiyat minhum al-Amwat. Innaka anta sami'an qareeb al-Mujib al-Da'wat. Ya muqallab al-Qulub. Thabit qulubin ala deenik. Ya muqallab al-Qulub. Thabit qulubin ala deenik. Ya muqallab al-Qulub. Thabit qulubin ala deenik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين